<laughs> what is up my nerds? It is time to do some soldering. You like soldering. I like soldering. Let's solder together. This is a XE run is how I've always said it. Some people call them Z runs. I say XE run. XR8 SCT speed control. I'm going to pull these wires off, replace them uh, so that I can have this as a backup spare speed control, stuff like that. So I'm going to pull some shrink wrap off and then get to soldering. So we'll talk about some of the gear we're going to use. The soldering iron is, this is a three millimeter chisel tip iron that I run right around 850 to 900 degrees is what I've always tried to say because that's what the little dial on the, the my soldering iron says. If it's actually that temperature, I, I don't I don't really know, but it seems like it. And then I try to use leaded solder if I can. Lead tin 6040 rosin core solder. The flux that's in the solder helps everything flow. And most of the products that are sold for international or electronics anyway, that are sold internationally. They have lead-free solder in them for a number of reasons, but mainly to help Mother Earth protect herself from lead going back into the dirt, landfills, all that. And then you always want to make sure you clean everything up as much as you can before you start so that you don't get more dirt into your solder posts and stuff like that. So a good, aggressive brush down in all directions throughout this process. And then keep your work area clean, all that can you know get back in there. And then on my soldering iron, I also run a small piece of sponge that you keep wet so that you can clean the tip of the iron constantly. A clean soldering iron tip helps everything flow better. If you do have problems, I mean, I get a lot of emails that folks, not a lot of emails, but I get emails that they have a hard time getting these wires to unsolder. And that's because of the international solder that's on there. It is lead free, it has a little higher temperature, it doesn't want to flow real well. Take off wire number one here. I got everything pretty cleaned up. And the, the only real trick that I have to solder or removing wires is if it doesn't go, you, you want to have some flux. I have some liquid flux, you know, it's a, it's a rosin flux basically. There's paste and all sorts of stuff, and that just cleans it up. But these are under shrink wrap, so they're pretty clean already. They're not corroded or nothing weird's going on there. But I like to always hit the iron with some fresh solder right before I start. Or solder, if you're international. That was pointed out to me that it's spelled solder. But so aluminum is spelled aluminum, not aluminium. That's what I'll say to that. So you just have to expose. There's a little cup that these sit in. So you, you hit the face of it with the fresh solder, and then that's it. It just comes right off. If it takes any longer than that, your iron's probably not hot enough. Or if you know your iron's hot enough and you're sitting there racking that thing around, maybe a little bit more pre-solder on the tip of the iron will help that. And then when you're rapid firing on soldering stuff, that can be kind of bad for the speed control. So I tend to take my time and do it one wire at a time. You can prep them all ahead of time and then kind of solder them all off right away if you're super good at the technique. But if not, that's a perfect way to kind of slow your soldering down by not doing a bunch of, I guess, pre-prep to the wire removal. Same thing when you go to put them back on. So again, just a little pre-tin on the iron. And then I hold the speed control down like that and I give it a little bit of tension there. If you have a, like a vice grips or a small clamp, sometimes it's good to, to hold on to the speed control. Or I even have double side taped them to my table so that they don't move around if it gets real tricky. But I've gotten good at it now that I just need to do this. Hit it with a little heat and then slide that guy right off. I bet you there's people at home that are saying to themselves, my iron must be broken because it doesn't do that. And it's quite possible. This is an iron that I've had since my Novak days. It's a... It's a Haku 928 station. It actually has two different heating elements in the bottom of it, so you can run two different size irons if you need to. I think of it as a great spare because I think it's two different transformers in there. Maybe not, because usually if a transformer dies, that's it. But that's besides the point. So this guy, uh, same thing, one more time. And... This one, we're gonna hit it like this, from the side bottom area. And solder flows, it just lets loose and it slides right out when, you're, when you got it right. And that, that comes from 
the temperature for one and then the iron being the right size too a lot of times you see folks get in there with these little tiny pointy tips and it just doesn't have the surface area so that big huge flat blade makes it it's great i like the chisel tip because you get this full size front for big wire and then you get the, the side that's smaller profile for doing like drone motor stuff things like that i use that chisel tip for everything clean all this out of here as much as you can and then <clears throat> My technique for pulling the solder out, you kind of hold the speed control upside down around its side, and then you put the tip of the iron in there, give it a little, oh, sure, you're making me look bad, speed control. And then what this is doing, it's the, it's the gravity solder sucker. It heats up the solder and it comes out, hopefully, onto the tip of the iron if you've done it right. It's not coming out. There, I got some. And you clean that off. And what I'm trying to do is get the, the leaded solder mostly out of there so that when I go to resolder my wires, I got fresh solder everywhere. For no other reason than cleanliness. Soldering is, mm, I don't want to say it's like welding because it's not, but the idea of clean surfaces is a good idea because the wire, you want to get the wire onto the surface that you're soldering it to. You don't want the wire to float in the solder. So with these cups, they're, you gotta kinda clean some of the solder out so that you don't have this big thick barrier that's keeping the wire from getting into the right place before you get it in there. So I didn't get it all out, right? I'm not trying to get it all out, but I got most of it out. You can get it all out if you want to, but it's not super necessary, but I just get try to get some of it out. All right, so for motor wires on this guy, I'm going ham. I'm putting 10 gauge motor wires on here. Why? Because I can. Now this, come, they come pre-tinned and that's fine, but I like to cut these, re-strip them and tin them with the same solder that I'm trying to use here. So when you prep wires, I found that using a pair of proper wire strippers can be very beneficial to not getting the strands of wire all over the place. Or it can make it way worse. So I've had conversations with folks about stripping wires because that's what nerds do. We sit around talking about silly stuff. And if your wire strippers aren't the right size, you're gonna make this problem worse versus doing the good old fashioned where you hit it with like a pair of scissors. Some folks, they do the dull exacto and they'll just take it and they roll it like that and then you can you can strip stuff that way i've gotten to the point where i just try to barely touch this the the surface of it and then usually most if you get any can you see that if you get any they, they came out in there those strands so you move that off to the side give this guy a nice solid twist and make sure that if anything's coming off, you get rid of it well out of the work area. I think I got pretty solid there. It doesn't look like I got any strands. So do that again. And then I'm just barely trying to break the skin of the, the insulation and then pull it off. So it just scores it and then tears it and then you get none. That was pretty good. And the insulation went shooting way over there in case you were wondering. Boy. Most interesting video ever. We talked for 90 seconds about how to strip a piece of wire. If you've never soldered before, this stuff is important because when you, you break that edge off and you don't know that that's happening and you don't twist the wires nice and tight, you will end up with, when you hit it with the iron, it goes and it touches the other tabs and that's no good. So next up, I take these, I got some spring-loaded tweezers that I like to use that were like 99 cents somewhere grab the wires and then I lay them I try to lay them either so that they're flat or pointing down because when you tin the wires is that when you tin the wires you don't want the, the solder to run into the wire it makes the wire stiff makes the wire brittle and it adds a bunch of resistance that you don't really want in there so I do these where I hit the top of the iron with the or hot top of the wire with the iron and I feed the solder in to the side and the bottom and roll the iron to the back. And that'll usually get most of it. And we're gonna come back at the end and touch these all up. But this will get most of the solder on there, solder. And then the finish tin to make sure that everything's all right. So that's kind of just globbed on there. I'm not done yet. So I take each of the wires and I try to hit them one more time from another direction and roll the 
the, uh, the wire like this. That way, the gravity keeps this little kind of ball at the bottom, and then you get just enough solder to tin the edge of the wire. It's not globbed on there. You can see the strands of wire. I'm going to do the same here because there's not a lot of solder on these already. And I'm hitting it from the other side. And then just slowly twisting this. And I try to twist the wire the same way from when I did the twist when I pulled the insulation off. Just makes it neat. Otherwise, obviously, you're untwisting what you just twisted. And that's all bad. You'll get solder in between the wires. But again, I think that's pretty decent. It's not a blob. You can see all the strands of wire. It's almost like it's not got any solder on it. It's just a very thin... Man, I'm like soldering with my mouth open over here. Because I'm trying to do a good job for the camera. Usually, I'm probably not this careful. All right, motor wires are prepped. Bring this guy back in. And then we're going to do these one at a time. So, the trick with the motor wires on this guy is I hold index finger and thumb. And then I'm going to go from above with the iron while I slide this into the slot. And that's why twisting them is real important. And the, the finished tinning, I guess you'd say, is kind of important too. Because if you got that guy splayed about and you go to slide that into the, the cup, it's not going to go. It's going to go cattywampus. You don't want that. So again, always... You can tell having some solder around for these is very important. So I have a big roll. So I'm going to hit the top and then I'm going to twist this guy down at the same time, real slowly and gently. And one more time, just to make sure, give it a little push, make sure that the wire sits all the way in there. And then what you're looking for is that it didn't go and mushroom out all the way off. Now a little bit on the back side, just a fuzz. I'm not going to worry about that because not going anywhere and it's all pretty solid and that could just be solder more than anything else so I think we're okay there then the next one I like to do is this middle wire because it's gonna get tricky so and then to make this one a little easier I'm gonna tin this guy up just a little extra and then I'm also gonna hit this right before we start the fresh solder into something right before you go really seems to, to make some of these jobs a lot easier when it comes to making the wires go where you want them to go. That fresh, shiny solder. So I'm holding the speed control upright. And again, this is when that clamp or taping it down is way better. We're taking the wires off, not that important for putting them on. And then it's just a little tiny, like that, I twist as I'm pushing in just to kind of keep the wires together. But if you do a real good job on the tinning and the prep ahead of time, that, that all stays right in there nice and tight. Like I didn't get any hangers, I got no flyers. I can still see like the graining of the wire, but I can definitely tell that it's all covered in solder and they're both that way. It's not blobbed on, it's not sitting in a puddle of solder or anything like that. It's important. Motor wires are as important as any other wire. There's each of those phases is doing something the whole time. And this guy looks a little light on the tinning, so we're gonna hit him again. All right. Clean, clean, clean. And just so we have a good run and we don't, like, usually what I end up doing, I'll get all the way down to the last wire of whatever I'm working on. And that's the one that makes me hate soldering for a minute and forget how to do all the things that I know how to do. And then solder starts to flow. You give it a little push and a twist. Oops, it's a little off. Oh, it's getting hot. Yeah. That's the nice thing about the big wire. You'll know if you're doing it wrong because you'll burn your fingers. Now, even with all of that, I still got a bunch of wire that kind of wicked up there because it's big, heavy-duty stuff, but it's, it's livable. And then I'm going to put some shrink tubing on this, of course, for safety. If anything happens, big crashes, that little layer of insulation will do wonders to keep things alive. The speed controls tend to come with some extra so that you can 
you know, color code it and all that stuff, which I've always thought is pretty neat. Makes it a lot easier for when you're doing wire placement. If one part of the motor has the, or the wire has the color on it, it just makes it easier to line them up and you don't get cross wires. Sometimes you can't see the edge of the speed control where the ABC is, but you'll be able to see this part really easily. So we'll pop that on there and then this guy is ready to go. So that is some soldering 101. I remember hot iron is the key to this whole process. A decent size tip, like I said, 800 degrees. This is a, I think it's a three millimeter chisel tip. The solder that I use is a 6040 lead tin rosin core, and then I have some liquid rosin flux as well. You don't want to use acid flux or acid solder. That's for so or for soldering hoses and clamps and pipes together for your plumbing. And always work in a well-ventilated area. Solder smoke is very bad for you. It's molten metal, essentially, so don't breathe that stuff in. If you've never soldered before, watch more videos than this. This is very basic. You want to wear eye protection and kind of know more than what I've explained here. I, I try to cover some basics every time and make sure that you, if you've soldered a little bit before, this will probably help you get some stuff right specific to soldering wires onto our sensitive RC electronics. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. If you've made it this far, I definitely appreciate it. If you do have questions, comments or concerns shoot us an email north america at hobbywing.com